Hey guys, it's me, Jay Dynamite, here with the first NBA 2K16 PS4 Lakers My GM. So, in this video, I'm just gonna go into the intro. Maybe I'll, I'll get a couple of games going. I'm just gonna sim the game and just sim it straight to the second season. Maybe in the second season, I'll give you one game per month. Uh, of course, a month in, in the game, not in real life, of course. So, I'm gonna give you the each My GM gameplay each Friday so yeah the first video is gonna be a little over 20 minutes long so and here I'm, I'm just going with the introduction with the owner and the expectations and such so you know if you wanna look at that just pause the video and look at what I'm promising to him uh, two things that the owner told me to do and these weren't really expectations these were just a, a wish list kind of thing and it was to trade Metal World Peace aka run our test and to trade Ryan Kelly, uh, Ron Test. Okay, uh, he's pretty old. I mean, he uh, he's uh, he no longer has that kind of value to the Lakers, anyways. And Ryan Kelly, I'm just not, you know, I just don't really want to have Ryan Kelly in the team. So I just, okay, I just, you know, let's just trade both instead. And you know, he told me either one or the other, but I just wanted to trade both in the first place. So. You will see who I trade them for later on in this video. Uh, the, I already pre-recorded this video, so this is the reason why I'm already telling you what's gonna happen up ahead. Uh, let's see, I'm just already generating rookies here. So the objective is to get the number one overall draft pick this time around, just to tank the season as, as, as it is. And the first trade will be with Ryan Kelly and just trying to get the, the best offer possible. So I'm gonna trade for let's see what trade for here. And I'm here just seeing his potential, you know, Kendall Marshall's potential. Seeing if it's worth it to pick. He was a B minus potential and Ryan Kelly was a C plus potential. And I'm already looking at, at the ratings. I mean, they were the same age, so I said, you know, why not? I may be giving up a future draft pick, but it's a 2018 draft pick. Which, and I said, well, I might not last that long. If even if I do, I might be already successful at that point. So, so you know, let's just get right into it. And uh, I got a reward here, and I and I picked up my reward there. If you want to see what was and that that I picked there, you could pause the video. And now here the assistant GM gave me the tip to change the the, the rotation. And I'm all I'm gonna do here is just put it, the the mids that the that the CPU recommends me to give to each player. So I'm not gonna bother much with the details and such. Uh, maybe monthly I could change the the lineups and such. But for the time being, I'm just not gonna bother much with it. Uh, But yeah, D'Angelo Russell should be starting, but he's actually not starting. Uh, surprisingly, in my opinion, he should be the starter. Uh, you know, known circumstances of this. And here I give Kendall Marshall the minutes and Metal World Peace some minutes. But you know, you pretty much know what's gonna happen up next. I'm gonna trade Metal World Peace, aka run our test, so... You know, you might think, why even bother giving him the minutes in the first place? I'm just like, well, okay, let's see what happens next. Uh, now, well, I trade Larry Nance, uh, Larry Nance is, is it his name, I think so. Uh, well, uh, well, I think I'm gonna trade him later on. But the only three players I'm just, I'm gonna keep at all times, the three untouchables will be... Uh, will be Daniel Russell, Jordan Clarkson, and Julius Randle. Those will be my three future players. But the rest of the team is pretty much disposable at this point. Uh, what I will do is just wait until right before the trade deadline to see uh, which team has the best chances of getting uh, number one overall draft pick. And that way I have twice as many chances of getting num the number one overall draft pick. But that's later on in this video and not this video in, in the series and here you see i get uh, i get the trade going i see a pretty good trading here i, I get a uh, 
a good player in exchange for an old player. Uh, once again, this involved the future draft pick. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna last through, uh, through 2017 in this series, but the thing is, I want to trade for the here and now. I'm trying not for the here and now for you know for next year. And I know that next year there will be a uh, plenty of good free agents to pick. So, and here I I I, I, I look I'm like, well, let's just see what other offers there there are on the table at this point. Uh, do I even trade him in in, in there? Okay, so okay, never mind. So I look for different trade offers here. Just just looking through, I thought that I had gone through uh, with that with that offer, but you know I'm just trying to narrate what's coming up along. Because it's pre-recorded after all, and uh, yeah, well, and I and you know I traded with the Denver Nuggets, and I'm just trying to you know the key is to tank the season, but at the same time just improve the, the overall performance of the team to just make sure that I just well I just have I just get you know that next year when I get a good free agent. Then we'll then this team can be deadly in so many ways. Shape, shape is informed. Uh, one of the players I'm looking to trade, and you know that I will be uh, saving, but only for trade purposes, will be Nick Young. I mean, he's a good player and all, a decent player, but it's not exactly the kind of player I want this at this point. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save him, but just until right before the trade deadline, so I could use him and maybe Roy Hibbert, maybe another player. To just to just get a trade going for a number one overall draft pick. So, yeah. So here I am looking at the at the schedule right here and first game against the Timberwolves, and we win this one by a really close margin. And here we go. Here's the press coming with stupid questions, just like always. You know the press is gonna give you that th those stupid questions 24/7. So all you can do about it is just try to, you know, try to give the best answer they can give. But make sure that your answers are honest to what you're gonna do and what you're gonna think. But sometimes it's best to just hide it from them and, and just reveal it later when it's actually gonna happen. Like. Uh, Sooner and later in this video, Nick Young is gonna be frustrated, and uh, it, and all I all I can tell him is that well, the only thing I can do for you is that he, you know, I, you you don't deserve to be a starter, right? And he wants to become a starter. And I just told him, well, you don't deserve, you don't deserve to be a starter. I gave him tough love. And it was just like, way to be angry for nothing, way to, way to be a bus kill. And, and his, you know, his morale went down uh, so much. And here you see me again with the untouchables here. Uh, I could use Brandon Bass for the trade offer for the number one overall draft pick. So, yeah. And here you see me winning two games, two out of three games. So... And here I lose my fourth game. So and you know the Nick Young thing is later on in this video. And then after his morale drops, I just talk talk to him again. This time to give him a little pep talk so he can so we can be on the same page or as close to, to, to being on the same page as possible. But here we go. I, I talked to this guy, Johnny Hamlin. Uh, we weren't exactly on the same page, so we had to talk it over and see what we could do. And uh, his morale is at 90. Maybe not. Maybe not. Not the best thing right now. But you know, better that than nothing. And here I have the status. This might be the the yeah the Nick Young thing. With, where his morale is a 60 right now. And it's gonna plummet down to somewhere in the in the high 30s after this conversation. If you want to look at, that, at this conversation, you can just pause the video and see what's up. And I decided to give him the the deny and tough love. I got gone for deny and cuddle, but I have to be uh, I have to be strictly honest with them 
Because the truth of it of the matter is I I, I want to save him but I just want to save him to be traded later on in the series. So Yeah. Near the press once again going with the stupid question just like always. And I decided to give him a uh, give him no comment there. And he's the only one to he's the only one who reacts to this situation. And I think I played one game before before going to talk to Nick Young. Uh, never mind. He has a 37 morale, and and the objective right now was to make sure that he got a uh you know somewhere above 40 at least. So I decided to give him a. Uh, um, you know, uh, some kind of pitch there. I think it was a keep shooting pitch. Uh, good pitch to use, but very limited. So use it wisely. I'm not sure if I used it wisely in this situation, but you know, I, I think I had to use it because I just think that he needed a little extra motivation to get, you know, to really play basketball. I mean, and really understand that while, while he is still playing on the role he's playing, he can give a little more. So. Yeah, and we have gone over the 10 minute mark. Wow, time really does fly when you're playing video games, doesn't it? Um, and then the next game, so you know, next game against the Knicks. Uh, and we have, we now have a 2-4 and four record. So I will save every player just to trade later on for a future draft pick. At most, the closest to what will be like the number one overall draft pick. If we are, if we are the ones to, to have the number number one overall draft pick, that's great. But if there's another team with the with the chance of getting the number one overall draft pick, then I'll then then we'll go for that draft pick, okay? Or maybe I could just wait until the uh, draft night and just go on and and trade there. Not not the safest plan, but you know. But the way I'm planning on doing it, it's also kind of not the best plan either because it's it's more about chances. You know, it's, it's a lottery after all, it's the NBA. And here we see, let's see, here we have another conversation coming up. Here talking with the trainer. Uh, to change the minutes because someone got injured there. Uh, I really should put Roy, sorry, not Roy, uh, the annual Russell to start. But looking back at the overall, I think it's the best thing just to keep him at the point guard spot, six man. You know, and this is most likely Kobe's last year with the Lakers. In this case, at least, you know, in real life, he's also this is also his last year. But you know, I want this year to be his best year. I'll uh, go out on a high note, you know, for all time's sake. I I might trade him, but it's unlikely that he might end up going to another team. So he might he might retire a Laker, or in, th in this game's case, this game has a uh, strange logic. So he might end up playing for another team after all. Uh. This song, this music right here, this song, I remember it was in NFL 2K5. If you actually looked uh, deep into the into a soundtrack back in NFL 2K5, you could look for that specific song that you, you're listening to right now. And here I am uh, picking the the best players possible. I'm not really trying to focus on picking players at this point. What I really want to do is just pick the best player in the draft. If it's a center, okay, fine. You know, it, we don't really have the best team right now, so we we can afford a power forward or a center or or a small forward at this point. But the only position where I will not, where I will say that it's not that good to pick to pick at this point will be put for point guard because since I'm planning to keep. Join Clarkson and Daniel Russell for the future then you know I could go for the other four positions but that's you know not for point guard unless there's an, a very intriguing offer that would make me think about trading either Daniel Russell or Jordan Clarkson and here's the strategy to try to 
stop uh, the more the rosin so So here are the changes. So right now, uh, let's see what's up next. I'm just narrating things as, as I go through and give my best explanation as I remember what's going on. Uh, what's 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 this about? Uh, what's it about the GM? Oh, uh, here the press is like, uh, you know, your assistant GM seems to be doing a better job than you. Did you have any comment on that? And I was like, no comment, you know. Uh, you know, uh, good for me. It was good for me that that the impact of the negativity of the assistant GM wasn't that wasn't that great. Uh, you know, otherwise it would have been. Really bad. And have to waste another pitch to to get him going. Uh, you know, I, I I cannot afford to waste any pitches, especially when I only have 40 VC. I'm only gonna use those VC for my career. I'm not gonna use any VC for for the thing that's going to be my gym. At uh, you know, I'm gonna save that VC for my career at all costs. So. And here's the schedule. Uh, I was trying to get through, trying to fix, this, uh, trying to make some adjustments here and there. And you know, I really have to fix that intensity. But you know, medium is just a little too low for me. They really need to intensify that a little more. I'm not gonna do it for very high. If one of the players is like, you know, you know, I want more intensity in my workout in my workouts, and I, then, then that will be another thing. But you know, for the time being, I'm you know, for the entire team. And Daniel Ross is one of the players that I would train him, you know, to his full potential. And here I'm working, trying to make some adjustments, see what's up. And you know, uh, my GM is something new to me. Uh, it's not, it's, you know, it's a different thing from the association. The association, uh, all you do is just, you know, when it comes to scouting and coaches, that's it. And here you get a little more in depth when it comes to GM. You're in charge of pretty much, pretty much just about everything on the, uh, you know, on the fly. And here I make a new move and don't click the X button to uh, to accept the price changes. And you know, I think that the price, the price, uh, the prices for all these stuff were just a little too much, especially when the team is not doing that well in the, to begin with. So, you know, my plan is to increase the attendance, but you know. If, if it means that I have to, I, I have to risk earning less money to get more attendance, then so be it. But, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do out there. And, uh, you know, then I realized my mistakes and, uh, I said, you know, later on I'm gonna realize my mistakes. I should have pressed the X button. And here you see me decreasing the pricing of the parking to five dollars I, I think it's just about right uh, it shouldn't be that price it shouldn't be 25 bucks uh, and it should be kept it should be kept to a minimum somewhere where uh, you know the everyday the, the everyday family can afford to go to to a game once in a while you know but this was just you know every single thing here was just too expensive and the hot dogs were that expensive and the soda that's the soda's one of the things that was like bruh how who will pay five bucks for a bottle of soda that's just insane and the burgers were a bit reasonable but i decided to cut down the price anyways the coffee was just about fine i mean uh maybe it could be like uh, some starbucks quality kind of coffee you know and not that I think that a Starbucks high quality coffee means just coffee. I mean, I mean, you could have the same kind of coffee right here at home, uh, and it's you know you don't have to pay as much. 
for for cup of coffee. So yeah, once again with the press. This time about price changes, and I was like, you know, uh, you know, but they were like, I don't believe you're, I, I, you know, I don't buy that you're trying to make sure that that the people. I know that he was like, I don't buy that you're trying to give people the best pri the best price as possible, so that the, so that the average family could go ahead and watch a game. And I had to tell him, well, that's the way I think I put it. Uh, you know, I actually was trying to make sure that the, that the average family tries to watch every single game. Uh, you know, not trying to be greedy or anything, but you know, uh, you know the process the price was just too high. Especially when a team is struggling, you should decrease the prices of the, you know, the tickets and all that stuff. But the other stuff were just too pricey, even for its state. I mean, even if they were the number one team in the NBA, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make the, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't make the coffee, so not the coffee, the hot dog, uh, be what six bucks or something like that that should be three bucks the the burgers okay six bucks is all right but no cut down one dollars and you know it's a win now the soda i mean how many of you would be willing to pay five bucks for soda okay so thank you so much for watching see you guys next time